Welcome to Human Heart Heaven. Today, we'll dive into the incredible world of lungs, exploring their anatomy, functions, and fascinating facts. Get ready to journey into the respiratory system with us as we unravel the secrets of the lungs, your body's breathing powerhouse. The airway tubes that initiate the process of inhaling and exhaling are called bronchi. They emerge from the trachea and divide into two main branches known as the primary bronchi. The bronchi are a crucial component of the respiratory system, serving as a major part of the process of inhalation and exhalation. Here is a brief overview of their structure and function. Origin The bronchi originate from the trachea, the windpipe that connects the larynx to the lungs. Division As the trachea reaches the lungs, it bifurcates into two main branches known as the primary bronchi. Each primary bronchus enters one of the lungs. Subdivision. Inside the lungs, the primary bronchi further divide into smaller tubes called bronchioles, forming a branching network known as the bronchial tree. Cartilaginous structure. The walls of the bronchi contain rings of cartilage, which provide structural support and prevent collapse during breathing. Smooth muscle. Bronchi are surrounded by smooth muscle that allows for controlled constriction or dilation, regulating the airflow. Mucous membrane. The inner lining of the bronchi has a mucous membrane that produces mucus. This mucus helps trap dust, particles, and microbes, preventing them from entering the deeper parts of the respiratory system. Ciliary action. Tiny hair-like structures called cilia line the bronchial walls and move in coordinated waves. This ciliary action helps move the trapped particles upward towards the throat, where they can be either swallowed or expelled. The bronchi play a vital role in conducting air between the trachea and the lungs, ensuring that oxygen is delivered to the respiratory system and carbon dioxide is expelled during the breathing process. Bronchioles are small tubes that extend beyond the bronchi and resemble the branches of a bronchial tree. They carry air to the final segments of the respiratory system, namely the alveoli in the lungs. Bronchioles are essential components of the respiratory system, and their main function is to transport air from the bronchi to the tiny air sacs called alveoli. Here is a brief overview of their structure and function. Structure, bronchioles are smaller air passages that result from the further branching of the bronchi. They lack the cartilage rings found in larger bronchi. Smooth muscle, the walls of bronchioles are primarily composed of smooth muscle tissue. This smooth muscle allows for precise control over the diameter of the bronchioles, regulating the airflow. No cartilage, unlike bronchi, bronchioles do not have cartilage, which makes them more flexible. The absence of cartilage allows bronchioles to constrict and dilate more readily. Mucous glands. Bronchioles are lined with a mucous membrane that contains glands producing mucus. The mucus helps humidify and trap particles in the air, preventing them from reaching the alveoli. Role in gas exchange. Bronchioles play a crucial role in the respiratory process by conducting air to the alveoli, where oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. Terminal bronchioles. The smallest bronchioles are called terminal bronchioles, and they represent the end of the conducting zone of the respiratory system. Alveolar ducts and alveoli. Beyond the terminal bronchioles, the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli form the respiratory zone where actual gas exchange occurs. Oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide is released. Overall, bronchioles contribute to the distribution of air within the lungs and are integral to the gas exchange process that ensures the body receives oxygen and eliminates carbon dioxide. Alveoli are tiny sacs located at the end of the respiratory bronchioles, which are part of the development of the bronchial tree. These sacs serve as the primary site for gas exchange and play a crucial role in the respiratory system. Here are the main features and functions of alveoli. Structure, alveoli are small, grape-like structures composed of thin-walled sacs. They are surrounded by a network of capillaries. Gas exchange site, the primary function of alveoli is to facilitate the exchange of gases between the air and the bloodstream. Oxygen from the air diffuses across the alveolar walls into the capillaries, while carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses into the alveoli. Large surface area. The collective surface area of all the alveoli in the lungs is extensive, providing a large surface for efficient gas exchange. This large surface area enhances the lungs' ability to extract oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide. Thin walls. The walls of alveoli are extremely thin, allowing for rapid diffusion of gases. This thinness ensures that oxygen can easily pass from the air sacs into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide can move from the blood into the alveoli for exhalation. Surfactant production, alveoli are lined with a fluid called surfactant, which reduces surface tension and prevents the alveoli from collapsing. 
This surfactant is crucial for maintaining the stability of the alveoli and preventing respiratory distress. Elasticity. Alveoli have elastic properties that enable them to expand and contract during inhalation and exhalation. This elasticity aids in the efficient movement of air in and out of the lungs. Ciliary action. Although alveoli do not have cilia, the movement of mucus produced in the respiratory bronchioles, carrying trapped particles toward the throat, is facilitated by ciliary action in the larger airways. Alveoli are vital for the respiratory system's main function of exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide, ensuring that the body receives oxygen for cellular processes and expelling waste gases. Pleura is a specialized membrane that plays a crucial role in covering and protecting essential components of the respiratory system, particularly the lungs. Its main features and functions are as follows. Double-layered membrane. The pleura consists of two layers, the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. The parietal pleura lines the inner surface of the chest wall, while the visceral pleura covers the outer surface of the lungs. Fluid-filled space. Between the parietal and visceral layers, there is a thin fluid-filled space known as the pleural cavity. This fluid acts as a lubricant, reducing friction during respiratory movements and allowing the lungs to expand and contract smoothly. Attachment and support. The parietal pleura is attached to the chest wall, diaphragm, and mediastinum, the central compartment of the thoracic cavity. It provides support and stability to the lungs within the thoracic cavity. Mechanical coupling. The pleura mechanically couples the lungs to the chest wall. During breathing, as the chest wall expands and contracts, the pleura allows the lungs to follow these movements. Prevention of friction. The presence of pleural fluid in the pleural cavity reduces friction between the lung surfaces and the chest wall during respiratory movements. This reduction in friction is essential for smooth breathing. Isolation of infections. The pleura acts as a barrier, isolating infections or diseases in one lung from spreading easily to the other lung. Maintaining negative pressure. The pleura helps in maintaining a slight negative pressure in the pleural cavity, which contributes to keeping the lungs inflated. This negative pressure is essential for proper lung function. Sensory innervation. The pleura is innervated with sensory nerves that can sense pain and irritation. This sensitivity is important for alerting the body to potential issues within the pleural cavity. In summary, the pleura is a critical component of the respiratory system, providing a protective covering for the lungs, facilitating smooth movement during breathing, and contributing to the maintenance of lung function within the thoracic cavity. Diaphragm is a crucial skeletal muscle that aids in controlling the process of inhalation and exhalation. It directly participates in the division of the respiratory pathway into upper and lower airways. Here are its main features and functions. Location and structure, the diaphragm is a large, dome-shaped muscle located beneath the lungs, separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. It is composed of muscle fibers and connective tissue. Innervation, the diaphragm is primarily innervated by the phrenic nerves, which originate from the cervical spine, C3 to C5. Contraction during inhalation, when the diaphragm contracts, it flattens and moves downward. This contraction increases the volume of the thoracic cavity, creating a negative pressure that allows air to rush into the lungs. Relaxation during exhalation. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and returns to its dome shape. This decreases the thoracic cavity volume, creating positive pressure that facilitates the expulsion of air from the lungs. Division of thoracic and abdominal cavities. The diaphragm acts as a partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavities. It ensures that the organs in the abdominal cavity are separated from the organs in the thoracic cavity, including the lungs and heart. Assistance in various functions. Apart from its primary role in respiration, the diaphragm contributes to other bodily functions such as coughing, sneezing, and vomiting by creating pressure changes in the thoracic and abdominal cavities. Support for posture and stability. The diaphragm plays a role in maintaining posture and stability of the upper body. It works in coordination with other muscles, including those in the abdominal wall and back. Phrenic nerve stimulation. Stimulation of the phrenic nerves triggers the contraction of the diaphragm. This nerve stimulation is essential for the initiation of the breathing process. In summary, the diaphragm is a vital muscle for the respiratory system, actively participating in the process of breathing by creating changes in thoracic cavity volume and pressure. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the fascinating world of lungs. If you found this video informative and enjoyable, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Human Health Heaven for more engaging content. Have questions or topics you'd like us to explore next? Drop your suggestions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious, stay healthy, and keep exploring with Human Health